projects that uh, a friend of mine, Bill Bowman, had helped put together. Uh, this is one track, probably out of four or five, that I did find. And uh, so this is from 1972. It was recorded by Grits, which was a local Washington band. Uh, they were really great players, but they had a great mobile studio. Uh, and I believe this was recorded either on, it may have been even 16 track at the time, or, or at least 8 track, but mm -hmm. it's actually a really nice uh, recording. And it was, I guess it was about what, 21 when I made this? 20, yeah, 20 or 21. Is your first record? Well, it, was, it never came out as a, as, a, as a record. We was hoping it would, but it was a little bit before uh, Aladdin Records, which I'll play the, uh, that later. But uh, this, unfortunately, didn't get put out, but we attended it to. Um, it's just, it was 72, and, you know, we were young. We just didn't have anybody really interested in recording anything like yeah, that. Yeah, back then, yeah. back then you could put out independent stuff, but the, the real the real deal was trying to get a record company to pick something up. Right. You know, you know, back then, you pretty much had Vanguard, Elektra, uh, what else, Delmar, but, you know, they were mostly working with guys who were uh, established, you know, entertainers that had been around for years. Mm -hmm. And I was a 21-year-old kid, so, well, actually, probably 20 when I made this. Let's take a listen to it. Here's Bobby Radcliffe in 1972, and he's 21, out of New York City. Originally from D.C., sitting next to me in the studio now, in the house. Bobby, that was your first released 45? Uh, the first song you heard uh, was uh, Hang Up My Rock and Roll Shoes. And yeah, that was the stuff that never got released. Yeah, right? that didn't get released. And then no. the second tune that you, that you guys heard, it was called Long Long Gang, which was on the, it was an old Amos Milburn song. And it was on the Aladdin label originally, and then Bill Hancock revived the label in the early 70s in Washington. And actually had Bill Moose Jackson and uh, Amos Milburn and I think a couple of doo-wop groups from the, who were actually on the original Aladdin, but the copyright had expired on the label itself. So they actually printed the label and had it, and it was Aladdin Records. The original same. logo. Yeah, yeah. And um, I guess he got got his a hold of that and put out about I guess there were about maybe six or seven, eight of us all all together on that label. Hmm. And. Uh, but that was the first one I cut. The other side of it was uh, That's All I Need, the Magic Sandwich tune from West Side Soul. This is great stuff. You've got it all in your iPhone. Um, it's amazing. It, 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 did you ever dream that technology would take us to this point? I didn't even have a computer until about, I guess it was five and a half years ago. Isn't that amazing? And now you're walking around with your entire, your entire catalog in your hand, the, the size of a cigarette pack. I know. All the stuff that's, that's, that's been released on... Uh, you know, on, on CD. Okay. It's all on your phone? Yeah. And some, you got some rare stuff here we want to get to. This is amazing. Um, is the Earl King stuff close? Can you get to yeah, that? Yeah, hold on. What's you, uh, you played live at, uh, it had to be a festival, and you, I guess you were backing up Earl King. I right? think it was called the Budweiser uh, Blues Festival. It was put on by Troy in Troy, New York, which I, I guess is, uh, Chris would know. Troy's right next to one of the other big cities, right? Utica. Utica. And uh, it, was called, it was called the Budweiser Blues Festival in Troy, and it was my band backing up Earl King. We, we traveled together for years. Uh, I was with Earl for many, many years. Oh, because you wrote Blacktop Records? Yes, we were label mates, and they stuck us together, and, we, and Earl and I became very good friends and, uh, throughout the years. And this was one we had probably been playing with him for about a year, and uh, uh, we're backing him up. It's Dick, uh, Dickie Dworkin on drums and Dave Hoster on bass and myself playing backup guitar. All right. But we would do these double bells, like we would do a show and then, and then Earl would come out and we would back up Earl. Like you were his opening act. Right. And so then you speaking. were his backing band. Right. What year was this, you think, or r roughly? Well, I, I toured with Earl from, I guess, uh, 90, 89, 90 till probably around uh, 99, 98 or 99. Wow. Yeah. It's quite a while, almost 10, you want 10 years. Something like that. I mean, uh, you know, he got very ill, so as most people know, toward the end. Mm -hmm. And um, I wasn't uh, present when he did die, but uh, it was a great loss, and he was—he was a very good friend, you know, to me. And I—I I really, I have a lot of great, you know, wonderful memories. Let's take a listen. Bobby Radcliffe and his band backing up the late great Earl King. Thing we do down in Louisiana all the time. 